guys, Matt from Iron Trap Garage, and we're here doing an episode on the Pagoda City Coupe. So, um, we've come a long way since the last time we probably had a video on this. Uh, chassis all painted, engine's back in, um, body's back on. It's looking like a car, which is pretty sweet. So, what I want to go over with you guys today was um, we did, we figured out a cool little trick for doing the whole radiator setup here. Um, if you guys that are watching anything like me, um, you like to make stuff look, at least when I build stuff, I like it to look uh, sort of factory when I do some of the stuff. So one big thing that bothers me is when I see a traditional hot rod at a show and it's got a big old aluminum radiator, just a modern radiator. It just doesn't look right. Um, again, even when they're painted black, most people don't notice, but I'm weird like that. It would bother me on my own car. So I was really, really um, focused on getting uh, this car to have uh, original tanks on it so they look old and just modify everything to make it fit, which makes it difficult. So uh, the difficult part with this, if I wouldn't have channeled this car, uh, we would have just used the stock 32 radiator and could have put it up on top of the rails um, and it pretty much would have worked without any real issue. Um, but my car is channeled pretty hard and I wanted to channel the grill as well to match. So I got my line stall match up. So what that does, it makes the core quite small um, and it um, causes some issues with the inlets and the outlets and uh, I want to show you guys a cool little way, um, give you a secret little trick that if you guys want to make something like this using all old parts except for the core of course, uh, you can do it with a little bit of parts honey. It looks factory. So we're going to bring the camera around to the other side and then I'm going to kind of explain to you guys a little more what we did and uh, how you guys can achieve this if you're doing a similar setup. Alright, so now we're on this side of the radiator. You guys can check out and see uh, what we got going here. So, the first problem that I had is that the radiator, you know, if I wanted to try and use a, a 32 radiator and you're channeling or you're chopping your grill, uh, it becomes so narrow that if you're running a flathead V8 where it has two coolant um, outlets coming out of the head, uh, the stock 32 uh, has it coming out underneath the tank here. Uh, so what that does is then your fan's going to run into your outlets and it's going to actually kind of go down and then go back up. It would be a little awkward. So I wanted the outlets to come up up top here uh, so it would be a nice flow, kind of like it would have been originally. Uh, so. I couldn't use a 32 top tank because of that, uh, because of where that came out. Now you may say, oh, you can, weld, you can weld up the bottom and put them up here. The problem is, is that a 32 tank actually comes down at a sharper angle at, up here at the top, and it doesn't leave, it does not leave enough room to put necks in it um, at a point where they're level or even with the water outlets on the head. Um, hopefully you guys can keep up with all that. So. What I decided was we use a Model A top tank. Model A top tank doesn't have quite as far, doesn't uh, dip down quite as far. Um, so it gives you a little bit of room, just enough room to put two outlets right here so that they come out and they even, evenly go right to the heads. Um, the problem with the Model A top tank is because it doesn't have that, that steep curvature, it doesn't allow you to sit the grill all the way in on the radiator like you would with a 32 uh, radiator and grill. Uh, I decided to compromise there and I set the, the grill shell or the radiator back however you want to look at it and it, really all it did was uh, it's maybe an inch and a half or so here uh, that's sticking out more than it would have original. It doesn't really bother me. It kind of lines up nicely with how the, uh, the support bars are here. So what that creates the next problem is the water neck uh, if you want to use an original uh, cap here, does not line up. Uh, what it does is your, your cap ends up being, your water outlet ends up being about halfway in the hole and you have a big open spot, about half the size of the opening that the grill uh, is forward of that. So, what I found was on the top here, how we took care of that, uh, I used uh, Chris from Dick's Radiator in Pottstown, Pennsylvania. It's pretty local to me. Really good with these old radiators. He and I kind of brainstormed together and he actually thought of it because he had a bunch of radiators kicking around his shop and he remembered one that he had that actually had the water outlet uh, on a 30's radiator 
that actually was like uh, soldered on piece that went to the front of the radiator and actually put the cap um, and the out the uh, inlet, you know, the, the fill to the front of the of the neck. So he dug around, we found it. Uh, what it seems to be, I haven't researched it 100 percent, but it seems to be like 35, 36 Chevy. I think it's truck and car. Um, they have a radiator and a grill that's sort of similar to uh, early Fords of the same era. And it has that secret neck that goes right on the front. It's just soldered on, so you can heat it up with a little torch and it'll basically just fall off, essentially. Uh, and what that allows you to do is you pull that off, we cut, uh, he cut an insert in the front of the uh, tank and he slid that in until it matched up with this hole perfectly. He, uh, he brazed it all shut so that it was uh, leak free and, uh, and it also, he swapped over and used the Ford, um, the twist section, if you will, for the cap from a Ford because the Chevy one was just slightly different. But you can just take those right out of your A uh, top tank. You can desolder it and put that right in there. So um, that's what we did for that. It opens and shuts like stock. It looks like factory, which is really awesome. Um, and everything fits and jives good. And these A, a radiators and A tanks, they can be found pretty cheap. So that's cool. It, save, it's, it saves you money on that end. It looks right. Um, on the bottom, what I did is I actually used a 32 bottom tank. Now the radiator I started with was a B model truck um, radiator uh, that was all beat to hell. I bought it at Hershey last year for like five bucks or ten bucks. It was, it was so cheap I couldn't turn it down. So what I did is we used the bottom tank um, and he put on uh, another uh, water pump out with there uh, for the water pump side on the bottom to match the one that was already there since it was four cylinder um, or a banger like the B's are. I'd only have one. So you put one on the other side, that matched up perfectly. Um, I took the outer frame and I cut out some of the center section of the actual core and I basically just shrunk it down until the grill sat where I wanted it to sit, I stood back, made sure the lines were good. And then what I did is um, Chris basically just told me just make the outer frame to match what I want it to look like and then just bring it to him. So I had two tanks with a big hole in the middle with jagged core that I just sawzalled out. And, um, and I cut and welded the uh, outer frame to, to uh, shorten it and cut it so that it matched and fit. And then all he could do was just put everything together. He could drop a core right in there and build it like you would normally. So um, really great. So to recap what you need to do something like this for doing a chopped um, or a channel grill and you want it to look old and original, you need a Model A top tank. You need a 35, 36, I still haven't figured out exactly which, which all years, a uh, Chevy radiator, which has the, uh, the removable or uh, soldered on uh, front radiator cap area uh, neck. Um, and then you can use whatever bottom tank you, you decide to use. I use the 32. Um, if you're doing a Model A uh, bottom tank, it's very difficult on a flathead V8 to make it work. Because uh, again, you run into an issue where it pinches uh, on the one side and doesn't work. So if you can find a, uh, a V8 bottom tank, that's really good. So that's uh, that's kind of the secret trick. Uh, I know those parts are sort of obscure, but if you guys are like me and you go to junkyards, swap meets, and, and you know scour around local uh, guys that have stuff stashed, you'd be surprised. Those Chevy radiators around. I think I bought a spare the other week at Carlisle. Um, for 20 bucks. So they're around, they're cheap. Hey buddy. And uh, they can be found. So that's the secret. Uh, hopefully you guys can use that and you find it useful. Um, that's all I have for this little bit. Thanks guys for watching. I'll check you next time.